Hello everyone, welcome to this lecture on the passage of drugs across membrane barriers. So first of all, in the playlists, there is a playlist of human anatomy and physiology. And uh, there you will find two lectures. First one is on the cell membrane transport, simple and facilitated diffusion. Second one is on the active transport. So please watch these lectures so that you can better understand this lecture. So then today we are going to understand the effects of pH and ionization on the drug mobility. Then we are going to understand a very important concept of ion trapping. And then we will see the glues ABC example is the PGP, SGLT, what are these and how are they related with the drug transport. So then we know that uh, rarely we can use the drug directly on the inflamed skin or some mucous membrane. Most often we administer a drug orally, the most common route. Yeah. So when we give a drug orally, it, uh, it reaches the gut and uh, from the gut it has to pass through the membrane and reaches the blood and when it reaches the blood as a free drug it will distribute to the whole body and it will reach to the site of action as well as uh, it will reach to some unwanted sites of action it will reach to various tissues so what i mean to say that a drug have to pass through various membrane barriers so how does a drug passes through these barriers we will understand that in this lecture so then what knowledge we have we know that the pharmacokinetics is the study of what happens to the drug in the body and uh, there are four processes that are involved in the pharmacokinetics first one is the absorption then the distribution metabolism and excretion we all know that a d m e and uh, this is the central compartment after absorption of the drug in the central compartment means our body it will distribute as well as metabolize and after that it will be excreted out from the body we all know that so we know that after we have given a drug orally it will be liberated okay what means by this word if we have given some tablet it will be broken down into small pieces okay and these small pieces will pass through pass through the gut membrane okay and uh, so this is the absorption so as the drug is liberated the absorption will increase and this after absorption the drug will reach in the central compartment as it's a free drug and this free drug will remain in equilibrium with the bounded forms such as at the therapeutic site of action with the receptor bound with the tissue reservoirs as well as unwanted site of action as well as protein bound drug okay and this free drug will also uh, will also reach the liver as well as other sites of metabolism and there it will be metabolized means biotransform and metabolites will be formed and these metabolites as well as free drug will be excreted out from the body. So then what is this passive transport? What is this active transport? We know that the passive transport is from the higher concentration to the lower concentration. There are two types of passive transport. First is the passive diffusion which is the most important mechanism for the majority of drugs okay so the majority of drugs pass through the membrane by the means of passive diffusion okay so and uh, there is another method which is known as facilitated diffusion which means by the help of carrier protein and then there is active transport which is from the low concentration to higher concentration means they require energy for this uphill movement means if you are going against the 
direction of flow of the, uh, the river you have to you have to exert some energy okay so that you can move uphill so there are two types first is the primary active transport second is the secondary active transport primary active transport uses the atp for their energy while in secondary active transport there is symport and antiport we will see this later so first of all the passive diffusion so the passive diffusion is from the higher concentration to lower concentration only thing we need is that this drug if it is a drug and if it wants to pass through this membrane it have to be lipid soluble okay because our cell membrane is of lipids it is a lipid bilayer so it have to be lipid soluble drug okay now in the passive diffusion most of the drugs pass through this mechanism and one important factor which play role is the ph and ionization so the ph of the medium in which the drug is present as well as ionization of the drug okay so these are two important factors that plays role and uh, most of the drugs are weak electrolytes means they are either weak uh, acids or weak bases okay and their ionization is ps dependent okay this is aspirin or ecosprin 75 you all must have seen in your families usually the older ones usually take it to avoid heart attacks okay so aspirin is a weak acidic drug okay aspirin as well as diclofenac these are nsaids or non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs so these are weak acids and remain in the form of ha and this ha or acidic drug releases a proton and causes a charged anion so it remains in equilibrium with a minus and h plus okay so this HA is lipid soluble of course and these are not lipid soluble because these are ions okay H plus ion and A minus ion. Now you all know this is what this is opium poppy or papaver somniferum one important drug one important constituent it contains is morphine this morphine was extracted out from this poppy juice and named morphine after the greek god of dreams morphium okay so the morphium is the greek god of dreams okay so it was named after that okay because of its euphoric effects okay so this morphine is weak base morphine is an opioid Pethidine is also an opioid. These are weak bases and weak bases. They remain weak bases. BH plus. They release H plus ion and uncharged base B. Okay, they remain in equilibrium. BH plus, BH plus. Okay, so this B will be the lipid soluble one while H plus ion and BH plus ion they will not pass through the lipid membrane so here you can see this that uh, weak acid HA can pass through the membrane while these ions cannot pass through the lipid membrane similarly in the case of weak bases B can pass through the membrane while H plus ion and BH plus ion cannot penetrate the cell membrane. Okay, this transmembrane distribution of these weak electrolytes, okay, these weak electrolytes, weak acids and bases, this transmembrane distribution depends on two important factors. First is the pKa and pH. We will see that. 
so the ph at the site of absorption is a very important factor because it will have influence on the ionization of the weak acids and bases okay so the drug and the ph of the medium in which that drug is that ph will decide the amount of ionization okay as well as one more important factor is the pka so the strength of weak acid or base is represented by the ionization constant or pka this also have influence on the ionization okay now to calculate the protonated form and unprotonated form we use this equation this is known as henderson hasselbalch equation and here log protonated form upon unprotonated form is equals to pka minus ph means ionization constant of the drug and ph of the medium these two factors will decide that how much weak acid and weak base drug will remain in the ionized form okay so if ph is equals to pka means ph of the medium is equals to pka of the drug then this will this will be the zero okay and log zero is one means the protonated form will remain in equals to unprotonated form okay so pka is the ph at which half the drug either weak acid or base is in its ionized form okay so half drug will remain in the ionized form if ph is equals to pka very important concept so here as you can see that suppose you have given a drug by the oral route and weak acidic drug this weak acidic drug in the gastric juice where ph is 1.4 means acidic medium this drug will not ionize a lot okay so this darker arrow is more towards this side so this ha will remain here more in this form and this is lipid soluble form so it will pass through the lipid mucosal barrier and here in the plasma where ph is 7.4 it will ionize a lot so the darker arrow here and here it will ionize more and will remain in the a minus plus h plus ion okay so this is known as ion trapping okay so h a passed through here and will accumulate more in the ions form so this is known as ion trapping a very important concept so the ion trapping is at a steady state an acidic drug will accumulate on the more basic side of the membrane and a basic drug on the more acidic side means a drug weak acidic drug on the opposite side of the membrane if it is basic and a basic drug on the acidic side okay this is known as ion trapping so let's see a case study here a 61 year old woman was presented to the emergency department and she complained of tinnitus shortness of breath and blood vision and there was a history of excessive use of salicylate means aspirin aspirin is salicylic acid for the previous 2 to 3 weeks and her uh, serum salicylate level was significantly increased and she recovered completely following the treatment with oral activated charcoal and intravenous sodium bicarbonate and potassium replacement okay so this patient she was taking aspirin a lot and when she was given in particularly intravenous sodium bicarbonate she recovered why is this so okay so we will understand that so the urinary ph first of all we have to understand this that urinary ph can vary from 4.5 to 8 okay so it may remain a lot in the acidic side as well as alkaline side okay so if we will increase suppose if we will increase the ph of the urine then what will happen 
if suppose we have increased the pH of the urine to 8 means we have made it alkaline so if this is alkaline then it will help in the passage of weak acid okay because of iron trapping okay opposite medium so it will help in the passage of weak acidic drugs while if we make the urinary pH more acidic then it will help in the passage of weak bases because of iron trapping so the alkaline urine will favor the excretion of weak acidic drug so that is why that happened actually in that patient we have given the what we have given the sodium bicarbonate and because of the sodium bicarbonate the pH of the patient was increased her urinary pH was was increased which leads to the iron trapping of the salicylate and that salicylate was removed from her body and she recovered okay that is a very important concept now we will see the facilitated diffusion so facilitated diffusion is from the high concentration to lower concentration with the help of carrier protein and one very important example is the slc transporter so slc transporter is the solute carrier transporter super family and, and it have some very important examples first is the glute that is glucose transporter as well as there are some other that uses facilitated diffusion such as organic cation transporter and organic anion transporters okay so let's see the glute so the glute have some very important role in the pancreatic beta cells this is the pancreatic beta cells so suppose you have taken some sweet diet and in the sweet diet the glucose was absorbed from your gut and it reaches the circulatory system and uh, when it reaches the pancreatic beta cells this glucose passed into the beta cells with the help of glut1 as well as glut2 is also there so with the help of glut1 and glut2 it reaches into the pancreatic beta cells and after a cascade of some some actions there was release of plasma insulin means there was release of insulin so the glucose entered into the pancreatic beta cells with the help of glut1 or glut2 and after a cascade of some pathway there was release of insulin into the blood and that insulin reaches to the various skeletal muscles and adipose tissues okay so suppose this is some skeletal muscle or adipose tissue now here what really happens is that that insulin will reach to the plasma membrane of these skeletal muscles and adipose tissues and here there are insulin receptors so this insulin will bind to the insulin receptor and after a cascade of pathway there is another glute which is known as glute 4 it will reach to the plasma membrane and this glute 4 this is known as glute 4 it will help in the intake of glucose okay so what really happened is that the GLUT4 remains in the cytoplasm, in the basal state. Okay, so when you have taken the sweet diet, this glucose will reach to the pancreatic beta cells and plasma insulin was released. This insulin will reach to the skeletal muscles and adipose tissues and bind to its receptors. And this GLUT4, which remain inside the cytoplasm in the basal state, it will be moved to the plasma membrane because of insulin effect and this glut 4 will help in the intake of glucose and the glucose concentration in the blood will decrease okay so this this concept is important to understand the role of insulin and its importance in the 
diabetes okay so one important factor which plays role in the diabetes is you all know is the insulin resistance in the patients with the diabetes mellitus there is insulin resistance means insulin wants that the cell should take the glucose inside but the cell says no i am not going to take the glucose inside my body inside my body means this cell is saying such so so why is this happening because of this here insulin came to the cell and binded to the membrane and wanted that the glut4 should move or localized towards the membrane so that the glucose intake is there but there is no movement of glut4 because of there is some impairment in this pathway okay so in insulin resistance in the patients with diabetes mellitus there is impairment in this pathway so the glut4 do not move to the plasma membrane okay this is one of the cause very important cause now we will see the active transport and here we will see the primary active transport we know it uses the atp and uh, there are some very important examples which use primary active transport they are atp binding cassette transporter or abc transporter atp for a b for binding c for cassette so a b c transporter okay and one important example of this a b c or atp binding cassette transporter super family is the p glycoprotein very important okay so this p glycoprotein is also known as abcb1 or mdr1 multi drug resistance protein 1 and here p means permeability okay so this permeability glycoprotein is a very important glycoprotein and its main function is to protect our body so the p gp protects our body from harmful substances from entering our body such as here we can see that in the intestinal lumen there are some substances suppose this is a drug okay this drug wants to move inside now this pgp function as an efflux protein okay so it effluxes out whatever the drug or any other harmful substances that wants to enter the body this pgp pgp will efflux them out okay so it protects our body not only in the intestine it is also present in the blood brain barrier as well as in kidneys and livers okay in liver so there are many places where this pgp is present and protects our body by effluxing out any harmful substance which wants to enter it is also present in the placenta so it protects the fetus you will see all that one by one now we will see the second reactive transport and second reactive transport includes antiport and symport so this movement is from low concentration to higher concentration and there is a usage of carrier protein as well as there are some black boxes here black squares there is movement of black square from its higher concentration to lower concentration and when this black square moves from its higher concentration to lower concentration its energy is utilized by another product or our primary drug which wants to move from lower concentration to higher concentration okay if they are moving in the same direction it is known as symport and if they are moving in the opposite direction it is known as antiport okay so now let's see another case study a 60 year old male patient with type 
diabetes mellitus and he has received metformin till now and he was well till now but now his HVA1C is 7.6 means it is raised HVA1C should remain below 5.6 or equal to 5.6 so HVA1C is raised and after reviewing the available therapeutic choices one another drug was added and this drug is canagliflozin okay so what is this canna gliflozin we know that metformin is an anti-diabetic drug what is this of course it must be anti-diabetic drug but how does it acts we will see this so here is the sglt2 or sodium glucose co-transporters there are two sglt1 and two okay so the sglt1 and 2 they are present in our body sglt1 is in the intestines while sglt1 and 2 are present in our kidney okay and their main function is to absorb the glucose so that they cannot pass okay so whatever the sweet diet you have taken to the gut of course it will be absorbed with the help of sglt so SGLT is a symporter. It will absorb the glucose with the help of sodium ions and symport it into the body as well as whatever the glucose trying to pass in the urine is also absorbed by the means of SGLT2 and SGLT1 while the 90% role is of SGLT2. So here the main SGLT is SGLT2 in the renal. Okay this co-transporter okay so what if we inhibit this SGLT2 then what will happen if we will inhibit this SGLT2 then glucose will not be absorbed and this glucose will pass through the urine and we can reduce the glucose concentration in the blood so here comes the role of SGLT2 inhibitors and they are the gliflozins okay such as we saw one example in our case study that is canna gliflozin okay so it is an SGLT2 inhibitor now another case study here a 24 year old female medical student is brought to the emergency department she ingested 20 paracetamol and 10 aspirin in a suicide attempt sadly and she was admitted in the ICU managed there and she was diagnosed as a patient of depression and she was started on a drug acetalopram 10 mg which is a SSRI we will see this what is this SSRI and what is this acetalopram after receiving this drug she uh, she got better okay so what is this acetalopram so well these are our happy hormones first is the serotonin which is a very important mood stabilizer second is oxytocin or the love hormone and then third is the dopamine which is a reward chemical and fourth one is endorphins okay so here we will see about the serotonin what is this serotonin how is it important in the maintenance of the mood okay okay so these are some symporters okay these are all some symporters which symport with the help of sodium ions okay in the same direction of course first in the dopaminergic synapses there is release of dopamine and this dopamine acts on its dopamine receptors while there is intake of dopamine with the help of dopamine transporter that is DAT similarly in noradrenergic synapses there is release of norepinephrine which acts on its receptor as well as there is this intake of norepinephrine with the help of norepinephrine transporter or NET in the serotonergic synapse there is there is release of serotonin which acts on its receptor 
as well as there is intake of serotonin with the help of SERT or serotonin transporter. Now what really happens is that we know that serotonin is important for the maintenance of the mood and it is a one important neurotransmitter which have role in the depression. So what we do that in the depression patient we increase the serotonin concentration. So how can we increase the serotonin concentration? If we will inhibit this serotonin transporter then this intake of the serotonin will be inhibited. Okay and this we do by giving selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors or SSRIs. Okay so these selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors inhibit the reuptake of serotonin by inhibiting the serotonin transporter and that's how we increase the serotonin concentration okay and one important example of SSRI is acetalopram very commonly used in the patients of depression as well as in other disorders such as anxiety so Thank you. Do subscribe, like and share. And what knowledge we gained today, we now know that PKA is the pH at which half the drug is in its ionized form. Ion trapping is at a steady state and acidic drug will accumulate on the more basic side of the membrane and an a uh, basic drug on more acidic side of the membrane and we used this concept in the salicylate poisoning we made the urine more basic so that acidic drug will accumulate more in the urine and will pass through the urine okay so we help a salicylate poisoning patient and we saw the solute carrier transporter super family we saw the glute as well as we saw the organic cation transporter and organic anion transporter we saw the atp binding cassette super family one important is the pgp which is present in our intestine in liver in the kidneys in placenta in blood brain barrier and it have a very important function of effluxing out any harmful substance which wants to get inside as well as we saw one important example of sglt2 inhibitors that is glyphosins we saw the dopamine transporter norepinephrine transporter serotonin transporter all these are symporters and we saw one inhibitor of this SERT. It is the selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. And one important example of SSRI is acetalopram. Okay. Now you have an assignment. Name the drugs that inhibit and induce PGP. These are the Francis. Thanks a lot.